Hey guys! So today I just wanted to do a review, I know I just did one, but I want to do another, on the YSL Fusion Ink Foundation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the foundation going on to see what I think initially, and then I'm going to check back in in a couple hours, and then finally at the end of the night, I'll let you know how it wears, um, what I think of it, if it oxidizes or not, all that basic foundation stuff. So really fast. This retails for $60. I got it at um, Sephora and this color is B10 in porcelain and this is the lightest shade and I actually had tried um, one shade lighter before or one shade um, darker before actually and I found it was just a smidge too dark on me and so I'm hoping that this won't be too light because I'm kind of at that in between two shades um, spot with my skin. Um, so I went on the lighter one just because I have, I'm gonna have a foundation be off. I would prefer it to be a little bit lighter than a little bit darker. Anyways, it comes in this bottle, has a little cap with it, um, but it is a screw on, but it's not a pour out. And so it has this little wand thing that you can um, either put it directly on your face or on the back of your hand, which is what I'll be doing. And this is an extremely thin foundation. The claims aren't on here like a drugstore would be. But basically it's supposed to be extremely thin and lightweight on the skin and also a higher coverage, which is kind of unusual since things that are the consistency of this are normally like BB creams, CC creams, tinted moisturizers, things like that, that really don't offer that much coverage. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try this out and I hope you enjoy. So I'm just going to take the little wand and I'm going to put some product on the back of my hand because that's just a lot more sanitary than putting it directly on your face. Um, so I think for starters, I'm just going to use about that much and if I need more, I'll go in with it. And I'm going to use my fingers um, just since it's such a thin foundation, but then I'm going to blend it out with my beauty blender. So I'm just dotting this all over my face. I don't know how much this will cover because it is extremely thin. So I'm just going to start out with like minimal, like it looks like there's a lot on my face right now, but it's just really pigmented, I guess, because there really is like nothing on here. It's so thin. It's like water almost. So I'm just going to blend this in. And usually when you blend things in, you definitely want to use either um, your middle finger or your ring finger just because those are a lot gentler than your other fingers. You're not going to be pressing as hard on your skin and especially when you're working in much more sensitive areas like under your eye, um, you want to be very careful because you don't want to cause premature like wrinkling or aging, any of that. So right off the bat, this just with one side already covered, um, this looks pretty great. It's extremely thin and it's blending very well and it's not complete like full coverage but I think that might just because be because I put um, so little on like literally I'd put like tiny tiny amount um, so with one side of the face done I think this will be pretty buildable it's setting really fast like this feels pretty dry so I'm gonna guess it's more of like a matte finish. So I think I'm going to go in with a little bit more product just to see how buildable this is and also see if it'll cover a bit more of the redness because I don't know if the camera will pick up on it right now but like right here and here on my face just kind of all out here is very red and that's not like anything bad that's just how I naturally am. So I'm going to go in with another like dab of um, the wand. There's like a little hole in the center so it picks up the product like that. So that's nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm mostly going to focus this on where I have more redness. So I'm not going to put a ton where I don't need it. By the way, just like the smell of this foundation is absolutely great. If you don't like scented foundations, this might not be great for you. And I don't normally. Like I don't like it's bad for your skin a lot of times 
or if it's just way too strong. But this is like really light and fresh and it kind of dissipates after you are done blending in your makeup. Um, but it's like kind of citrusy. But looking at this with the second coat, this is definitely buildable. I'm getting a lot more coverage and the red is still, or the pink is like still poking out through my skin. But it's not bad because nothing will ever cover that completely, that's just how my skin is. Um, but this is like really, really soft feeling on my skin. And just the lightest touch of my fingers is blending it out beautifully. Like to the point where I don't even know if I need the beauty blender. Plus it's already really dry. But I think I am going to go in just to make sure it's all um, seamlessly blended and maybe just add a little bit of moisture back because it is feeling kind of dry. So Yeah, so the beauty blender isn't making a huge difference because this is already pretty smooth. So just really fast, what I'm not liking off the bat, it does feel kind of dry, but that's about it. Um, what you might not like is, is scented just slightly, but if you're okay with just a light scent, then that's not going to be the problem at all. So yeah, I think I'm going to check back in real fast after I finish all my makeup and just let you see how it looks with everything else on it. And then I'll check throughout the day. Okay. Alright, so I finished up my makeup. Um, and I normally... Ooh, ow. Um, I normally set my foundation with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder um, just so I don't get oily, but this is like such a dry foundation I'm finding that it's like almost clinging to some of my dry spots. Let me see if I can zoom in and let you see it. But like definitely around my nose. Um, and I have a couple dry spots down here, it's not really showing that well. But my nose does get like dry to the point of like peeling before it gets like oily sometimes. It's kind of a combination. And so the foundation still looks great. It doesn't feel drying. Like, you know, when you have drying foundation, it sometimes feels kind of um, heavy. Um, this still feels really light. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing almost anything. But my dry spots are a little bit more apparent than before. And that's not a huge deal because I don't have a ton of dry spots. Um, but just if you have really dry skin, I'm so far thinking this might not be for you. Um, but if you have really oily skin, this would probably be perfect because it's lightweight, it's heavy coverage, and it's dry. So if you have really bad problems with oil, it'll probably help keep you matte, or at least more matte throughout the day. Um, so yeah, I'm going to check back in in a few hours. Um, so yeah, I didn't end up um, setting this with any powder, by the way, just to clarify. Um, I have like some highlight and some contour on right now, but that's the only other thing that's on my face, except for um, primer and foundation. So if I need to touch up later, I might, and I'll let you know if I do. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye! Hey, I also forgot to mention that it is currently 12.50, um, and so I'll check in in a couple hours and let you know what I think then. Bye! Hey guys! So it has been about three hours, it is now 3.53, and the foundation is still holding up really well. I would hope it would last for three hours, but... I said before that it felt extremely drying, and I don't know if it's because I've gotten more oily throughout the day, just because I get oily pretty quickly, or it's just the way the uh, foundation set, but it doesn't feel drying at all anymore. In fact, I do look a tiny bit shiny. Um, I have highlight right on my cheekbones, so it's not bad, but like, um, especially around my nose is where it gets really bad, and kind of my chin, my forehead. So I am just going to go in and touch that up with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and see if that'll help it last a bit longer so it doesn't look so shiny. So I'm just going to use a big fluffy brush with that and put that all over my face. And there we go, all touched up. 
So, so far it really is quite a comfortable foundation. It's really light and very smooth. It does look a tiny bit cakey around my nose, but that's just usually where foundation wears away on me and also on the bridge of my nose because of my glasses. But with all things considered, that does that all the time and it actually has not been that bad. Like if I wear like a BB cream or even like some of my heavier, more um, long wear foundations, it'll crease a lot more under here because it's a heavier product or it's like more creamy or has more like a moisturizer feel. But since this is so liquidy and like so thin, like you didn't, I didn't put that much on, it really doesn't feel like creasy anywhere. And I really love that about it. So I'll see how it goes throughout the rest of the day and I'll check back in at the end of the night. Bye. Hey guys, so final check-in. It has been, hold on, okay. It has been about nine hours. It's 9.30 right now. And all in all, the foundation has still held up. It has been kind of creasing around my smile lines, and it's like completely rubbed off around my um, the bridge of my nose just from my glasses. But other than that, let me see if I can zoom you guys in. Like it's still covering really well. It's still fairly satin finished after the touch up from earlier. Um, most of my redness is still covered up, a little bit showing around my nose, but that's no biggie. Um, I do have to say it does feel a little bit cakey, like where my pores are a little bit bigger. Um, and normally my professional does help with that, but I don't know, it just seems a little bit heavier right there. But overall, my face still feels really light and like I'm not wearing that much, but it still looks pretty full coverage. So final thoughts, I like how thin it is, I like how highly pigmented it is, I like the smell a lot. Um, it wears really well, it does um, feel kind of dry when you first put it on, but it's not that bad. And you do get a bit oily later on if you have oily skin like I do, or combination. Um, but just some powder will fix that, but I suggest powdering maybe like not until you need it. Cons, it's really expensive. This was $60 at Sephora, and it gives you 84 fluid ounces, which is uh, 25 mil. So that's a fair amount, so that should last a while, and since it's so thin, you really don't need that much, and so it will last you a long time, but it will cost you an arm and a leg. But overall, I really like it. I really recommend it. It didn't oxidize at all. It didn't wear it like it didn't run down or anything. I did get a bit sweaty during the day and it still held up. So I'm pretty impressed. I like this a lot on its own and I've actually been using it mixed in with other foundations before I tried just on its own like this. But I like it a lot. I really recommend it and should if you have the money and you have the desire to get this, I suggest picking it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!